is a sequence of existence and events that occurs in an apparent irreversible succession. We go from the past to the present into the future. So no time in heaven. In, on earth, on planet earth, where we live, we have time. But in heaven, toward heaven, where God Almighty lives and the elders, as the Bible talks about those elders, and the angels of God, there is no time there. They don't walk with time. There's no time. It's all day. There's no night. They don't keep time. So, no time in heaven. There's no time in, in eternity. So, when we become a spiritual entity, when Jesus comes, we make him in the rapture. Whether we are alive, when Jesus comes, or we are dead, even the dead in Christ shall rise first. So, now, in heaven, there is no time. It's eternity. But on earth here, where we live, there's space and time. On planet Earth is space and time. So Christians are connected to God, to heaven, spiritually. We are connected to God spiritually. We cannot see God with our visible eye. But we are connected unto God spiritually to heaven. And that's why Jesus told that lady, he said at the well, he said the time has come. That those who must worship God, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. So that's how we are connected to God spiritually. So now my brothers and sisters. So when God releases his purpose for the earth, when he releases it spiritually in heaven, it is manifested naturally on earth. So things go from the spiritual realm then come to the natural. So that's why I'm saying when God releases his purpose for the earth spiritually in heaven, it is then manifested naturally on earth. And there's time and season for everything. What is season? We talk about time. So what is season? A season is a division of the year. You see, we started January 2022. Now we're in December 2022. So between that period of time of January to December, we've seen so many seasons, right? So, and season is a division of the year based on changes in weather, ecology, or ecosystem, and the number of daylight hours that is given in different regions. We have North Pole, we have South Pole, we have the West Side, we have East. So in different geographical locations, they have different seasons. Some have rainy season, dry season, some have winter, autumn, summer, and some have increased daylight, while some have less daylight. So now, we have divine season. So because what we are saying tonight, we are talking about is time and season. Because I say for every purpose and for everything under the heaven, there is time and season for it. And I went on, I said, people are crying. People say, oh, where is God? Where is God in all this evil? Most of the time when I used to, uh, before COVID, the place where God placed me, where I, I evangelize every Monday, Wednesday, and, and Fridays after work. People come to me, they talk to me, we talk, we pray for them. A lot of people ask me questions. Most of people, where is God? Where is God? Where is God in all this situation and in all these evils? And I give them the answers. And I sometimes point them to the scripture also. So people say, where is God in all these evils done to them or to others? And some people say, oh, God gave them promises. They haven't seen it. But I said to you, if God truly speak through an holy man of God, not through a voodoo man, juju man, santeria man, people who use enchantments who tap into the spirit, illegally tapping into the spirit. I'll talk about that someday. But I'm talking those who speak through the true spirit of God, who hear from God, and God speaks through them as an orator. If God indeed speaks through one of his prophets, holy men and women of God, as the Holy Spirit lead them, they, they speak, the word will surely come to pass in your life. It will definitely come to pass. And those who are waiting for God to revenge, God will avenge them of all the evils done to them and to others. And no condition is permanent. So we say, oh, no condition is permanent. Indeed, there's no condition is permanent. God can change anything. 
people who are under bondage. God break their shackles and chains, prison gates, and set them free. I am one of those also. God broke shackles, chains, and prison gates over my life and set me free and broke generational causes. So no condition is permanent. But we have to understand time and season. Time and season. Especially as children of God, we have to understand time and season. That everything, everything, that for every purpose and for everything under the heaven, there is time and season for it. Even God, when he visits us for good, there's time and, and season for it. When God visits those to punish them, the evil people, there's time and season for it. A lot of people think that, oh, God doesn't know what's going on, the evil done to people. People suffering, bloodshed all over the places. There's time and season. He will bring judgment at the time he has appointed for it. So people should not think God is sleeping or slumber. When we say, oh, why is, where is God? Where is God? Where is God in this situation? God sees everything. He knows the beginning to the end. He is the creator. He is the omniscience, omnipotent, omnipresence. There's nothing that's hidden before God. Whether it's done at night or daytime. No creature of God can hide. Even if you go in the sea, God will see you. There's nowhere. You can dig yourself and go deep, deep, deep. In. God will see you. Even hell, God is looking at it. Everywhere. There's nothing hidden before God. So that's why I told them, there's time and season for everything. So now my brothers and sisters, friends and colleagues, I want to reassure and encourage you that for every purpose and for everything under the heaven and on this planet earth, they are all under God's control. Everything on this planet earth, they are all under God's control. And it shall all be done. They shall all be done. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter if it's God promise that he has promised to do great things in your life. Good promises for you. It doesn't matter if it's prayers that you are praying unto God. The only time God will not answer your prayer as a children of God. If it do, it's, not, if it's not according to the will of God for you. God always answers the prayers of his children. And I can give you example, example. All night we can talk about that. But God will not answer even because the, the, the Bible says the prayers of the righteous are veiled much. The only time God will not answer if it's not according to the will. Because God answers prayers according to his own will. If it's not the will of God for you for that prayer, he will not answer it. Even sinners that God, the Bible says God does not hear the voice of the sinners. It's there in the book of John. And it's also there in Isaiah. I can take you to one time I was talking I, I spoke about why God does not answer prayers sometimes ago. I still have the video on YouTube. Many, you know. So, but even for the sinners, God will answer the prayer of repentance when we came to God. If it's genuine from the heart, God will answer that and set them free. So there's season for answering of prayer. There's season for your prom, from your prophecy to be fully fulfilled. That what God has promised to do in your life. To bring it to pass. There is a season and time for God to avenge those evils that have done, been done to you to, to many. And there is a season and time for God to judge the evil ones. So now, and that's why I reassure you tonight. That I want you to be reassured and encourage you that for every purpose and for everything under heaven and on this planet, they are all under God's control. And it shall all be done according to his own time and season. According to the, the God's time and season, which is the will of God. For the issues of things and purpose under the heaven. Be it for great promises and blessings that God has spoken to you through prophecy. Remember I was talking about through prophecy, through prophetic words given to you. That God said he wants to do this, he wants to do that, he wants to do that in your life. God shall surely bring it to pass. Except if it comes from a false prophet who prophesy lies, who prophesy from their flesh. But if it's from true man and woman of God that hears the word of God, it shall surely come to pass. It may tarry. It may tarry for a while, but it shall surely come to pass. 
So now, my brothers and sisters, be it to avenge the evil done to you or to others, it shall come to pass. Be it to reward you for all your good works that you have done to others on the behalf of God. God sees every good work that is done and he will reward everyone that have done good according to their works. Be it in the ministry works given to you by him. I'm talking of those that God, I'm not talking ministry work that pastors give to people. Pastors do not assign ministries. It's God who calls people into the ministry. Even Apostle Paul said it. They say, Apostle Paul, whom God and our Lord Jesus Christ have called. Apostle Paul that is not called by men, not by people, not by congregation, not by denomination, but God Almighty called Apostle Paul. So now when I talk about work, works that you do in ministry for God, it's not works assigned by a pastor, but works that God Almighty, if God called you to be a prophet, God has called you to be a prophet. If he called you to be a minister, he called you to be an evangelist, he could call you to be a miracle worker or deliverer or healer. Whatever God has called you, the ministry that is called, that is really called from God. I'm not talking of you that you, you were made a pastor by a man, by another pastor. That God did not call you. God did not make you a pastor. But another man made you a pastor because you kiss up unto him and you serve him. And then he made you a pastor. Not every pastors are called by God. I want you to know. I repeat myself. Not everyone that call, call themselves pastors are ordained and called by God. But I'm talking about those who are called by God into ministries. God will reward them for the good. So now... For your sufferings, all the sufferings for those who have suffered for Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many who have been abused, who have been persecuted, who haven't been killed also because they love Jesus Christ. God shall reward them. And I want you to know that he will surely judge all the evil men. God will surely judge all the evil men and all the evil leaders and the wicked and the ungodly, the mockers and the blasphemers of God. And also the unrepentant sinners who are refused to repent. So there is a time and season, as I said, that for every purpose and for everything under heaven, there is a time and season for it. And I say, be it for good or be it for bad. There is a time for it. And when God visits, God, God does two types, of, two types of visitations. God can visit people for good. And he can visit them to punish them. Even that, there's time and season for that. Some say no condition is permanent. Indeed, it is true. There is no condition that is permanent. Finally, my brothers and sisters, I want to say to you tonight, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Whatever promises God has given unto you through prophetic dreams, visions, through prophetic ministration, through his word and confirmation, God always confirms his word, always, so that you don't get confused. If a man tells me that God called him into ministry, when I listen to him, I know the word he was, I will know, because when God call you, he will confirm it and confirm it and confirm it through different people that don't even know each other, that you will know, yes, God has called you. But if you don't have that, then God has not called you into the ministry. Because God always confirms his words. So I say to you tonight, that wait on the Lord for your promises. Wait on the Lord for your promises. And whatever promises God has for your children, wait on the Lord for those promises. Wait and see the powers of God. I say again, wait and see the powers of God. Trust, love, and serve the God. And serve God with all your hearts as you wait on him. Walk in his holiness and righteousness as you wait. Again, finally, my brothers and sisters, there is a time and season for everything and for every purpose under the heaven. And God's time is the best. So if we go to the scripture right now, let's see the scripture. Um, I go to, I start with, uh, let me see, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, uh, Chapter, let me see, chapter 3, I read from, let me see, 
Okay, I have my Bible. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. I read quickly. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. That's why our topic tonight. To everything, there is a season and a time. To every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sue. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. So if we go to verse 17, 14 of that same Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, 14, say, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it. And men should fear before God. Men should fear before God. So verse 17, I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. I said in my heart that God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. You see? When people say, where is God? Where is God in all this suffering? In all this evil done to them? In all this evil done to others? <laughs> My friend, when I send something out that Jesus sit on the throne in heaven and is laughing at Satan, and laughing at all these wicked leaders, all these evil children of Satan, with all their evil that they are doing. God is laughing at them. And as I say, you see, that God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. God has not forgotten. Where is God? Where is God? Where is God? No, God is not sleeping. It's not, it does not slumber. Where are the ones who go to bed? It's eternal God. It's a spiritual entity. It's a spiritual being. That's why Jesus said, "When we become like one, we shall become like one of an angel, like one of an angel of God, which they are spirits." So, and that's why I say, those who must worship the Father, we must worship God in spirit and truth. And you remember, I told you we are connected to God in spiritually. I say, in the, on the earth, in space and time. In heaven, there's no that. There's no time in heaven. So now, my brothers and sisters, if we go to the book of uh, Genesis, chapter 18, verse 10. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forever and evermore. And blessed be Holy Spirit of the living God forever and evermore. Amen. So Genesis, chapter 18, verse 10. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent door, which was behind him. So when God came, this is a prophecy. God came, when God came, there came three angels came to Abraham. In that evening day, Abraham quickly saw three of them. He bowed down. He washed their feet. He told this, uh, get the best animal, get this, and bring milk and all this thing. And God was asking Abraham, where is your wife? Because God was one of those angels. The two of them, the two angels that are the one who went to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the city of homosexuality, the city of abomination. And God stood with Abraham. In fact, Abraham, because his brother Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah, was there. And he was saying, if you find a righteous, he started bargaining with God until he got to 10. And they could not find 10 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Adnan and, and Seboim. A lot of people refer to Sodom and Gomorrah. They forgot that's under two cities. Adnan and Seboim. And God destroyed that city because they cannot find 10 people. So Lot and his family, the, the, the angels told them leave. So that time, God was among them. God told Abraham, your wife will give birth to a child. I believe probably Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 or 80 something. 
I wrote it somewhere that I cannot remember. They are at their old age. Today, they will say, oh, you have passed your biological. The doctor said it's impossible. And God said, at the time of life, at the time of life. So this is a prophecy. So I'm telling you that whatever God has spoken into your lives, into your children's life, at the time of life, God will bring it to pass. When we say, oh, God told me this, it haven't come to pass. If God really indeed spoke through his holy men and holy women of God, that word that God has spoken, shall ne it can tarry, but shall surely come to pass. God has spoken things in my life. It happened instantly. And some will take time to happen. Even there are some I'm still waiting for. So when God speaks, he will bring it to pass. They say if it's a false prophet, and when God speaks, you know, because God always confirms his word. So you don't get confused. You do not get confused. Even a lot of things before I somebody speak prophesy in my life, God already showed me in visions and dreams. That prophecy is just confirmation of what God already. So God always confirms his word so that you don't get confused. So whatever God has spoken in the time of life, and that's why we're talking about season, time and season. In the time of life, it shall surely come to pass. Just like Abraham. God said, your wife Sarah will have a child. His name will be Isaac. And Isaac did come, even at an old age for both of them. Because the word of God cannot drop to the ground. It shall surely do what God has sent it to do. So if we go to the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 40. So tonight we're talking about season and time. As the children of God, we should be able to discern spiritually seasons and time. That's why Jesus told you, I said, you can say today is Monday, Tuesday, it's raining, it's cloudy, but you cannot discern spiritually. So we children of God, we have to ask God to come to bless us indeed and increase our discernment to have the gift of spiritual discernment, to discern things in the spirit. Isaiah chapter 40. Even when God sends you a word, even your spirit, your heart will click with it. When people give me prophecy, it just click. You know it's God speaking. Because the spirit of God lives in you. So if you hear the word of God, you will click. You will know. Nothing people tell me that is from God. I know it no hundred is from God. So because his spirit dwelleth in us. And we're able to discern things. The Bible says men can discern the things of men because they have the spirit of men. But the children of God can discern the things of God because the spirit of God that is in them. That's why they say the, the spirit prays for us. He teaches us how to pray. Do groaning, groaning. And it's the spirit of God that can recognize the things of God. And that's how we get revelations and understandings of the things of God. And that's why the world cannot understand God because they have the spirit of error. The spirit of God is not in them. It is the spirit of the world, the spirit of error, which is the spirit of Satan. And that's why you see those leaders, they are fighting against God. Teaching people to walk in sin and abomination against God. If they were true, have the spirit of God. People can tell you they are Christian and carry the Bible. That does not mean anything. And say they go to church and say, Jesus said, by their fruit ye shall know them. When Jesus was talking the book of Matthew, not what I'm discussing tonight, he was, but he was saying, he said there are a lot of false prophets. The same thing have a lot of false Christians. If you say God is your father, you cannot fight against God. In the Bible, have you ever seen opposed to Paul or the disciples of Jesus Christ? The children? You, if, you cannot fight against God. If you say you're a Christian and you fight against God, and do things against the laws of God. You are a fake Christian. You do not have the spirit of God in you. Because it is impossible. Jesus said, house divided cannot stand. When people told Jesus, oh, they are casting out demons. They are praying in your name. He said, yeah, but they are not in the same group with us. Jesus said, yes, they pray in my name. It's good. It's good. He didn't condemn. He said, it's good. He said, house divided cannot stand. When they accused Jesus... That cast out demons in the power of Bezebel. He took can, can a house that divided stand? No. Satan cannot fight against Satan. Demons cannot fight against demons because they will not be able to stand and carry out their agendas that they are doing right now. There must be unity and one accord for something to be done. The reason why Christians are 
have problem today, even during the vaccine, because they don't have, they don't speak with one word. Unfortunately, they don't speak with one voice, no one accord. This is my denomination. That is my demon, your demon, denomination, demon, nations, demon, denom, denomination. When we were baptized, we were baptized into one spirit. Jesus is the head of the church. We are the bodies. When Jesus started his church, there's one church. We are baptized into one Holy Spirit. There's no Holy Spirit for this denomination, Holy Spirit for that denomination. And that's why Christians suffered in this nation and other, because they cannot, they are not one. But you can see the evil people. They are all one. Even me and uh, uh, the sister were talking about it. All the rich people, irrespective of where they live on the, in the earth, they speak with one voice. A house divided cannot stand. And that's why a lot of Christians suffer. There's no real leader. They cannot make, come out and speak with one voice, one accord. But that was not the church that Jesus started. That was not, was, that was not how opposed to Paul. Peter, Philip, all his disciples. That's not the way the early churches operate. If you go to the book of Acts, it says with one accord. They speak with one voice, with one accord, one unity. Even the sister preached about that years back about unity, about accord. And that's why they were able to do great work for the kingdom of God. So my brothers and sisters, I say uh, Isaiah of 40, chapter 40, verse 31. Let me read. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. You see, my brothers and sisters, I say, wait, wait on the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. If we go to Isaiah 55, 11, chapter 55, verse 11. Hallelujah. So shall my word be that great forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in that thing whereto I sent it. You see? When God speaks a word of prophecy, promise you something, it shall surely come to pass. That's why the Lord says, So shall my word be that great forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. That's why I say to you tonight, I encourage you, if God has spoken something in your life, into your children's life, it shall come. And that's why we talk about season and time. There's season and time for everything under heaven. I say to you that God releases things in heaven spiritually, and it is manifested naturally. When we see it, get it. It has come to be. But everything is released spiritually. Hallelujah. So now, my brothers and sisters, if you go to the book of, uh, uh, let me see, uh, first, uh, first King chapter 8, verse 56. I want to quickly do all the Old Testament. Then we'll just go to the uh, New Testament. First Kings uh, chapter 8, 56. Chapter 8, verse 56. Okay. That he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. You see? So now, and that's why I say, even as we wait on God, on what God has promised us, has spoken into our lives, into our children's lives, we still have to continue to walk with God in his holiness and righteousness. Remember I said it when I was uh, talking earlier. Uh, and said that he may incline our, in our, incline our hearts unto him. To walk in, in all his ways. And to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments. Which he commanded our fathers. So now my brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of uh, Daniel. Before we go to... 
few, the few uh, New Testament, and then we come to a close. Uh, Daniel chapter 10. I want to show you something. And that's why I pray earlier that any gifts, any blessings that God has sent for 2022 that we have not received, we have only 15 more days or less for 2023 to come. And I pray to God Almighty that that blessings that God has released for 2022 that has not come to us or to our children. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, through the power of God, the Father, Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that that blessings will locate us within these few days before the end of this 2022. The blessings that have been made, that have been released spiritually in heaven, that we might not even know about or we know about, but has not come, has not found us. And I'll tell you why. What happens sometimes to those kind of blessings? And God, we make it that it will come before 2022 finishes, come to an end. So uh, the book of Daniel, let me uh, do quickly uh, Daniel. Let me see. Okay. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10, 12 to 13. Okay, let me read. Ten, yeah, Daniel uh, 12, 13. Okay. Then said he unto me, that's the angel that appeared unto Daniel, the man of God. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were hard, and I, I am come for thy words. So Daniel, pray unto God. That same day that Daniel prayed unto God, God had him immediately. Verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, who is the prince of the kingdom of Persia? Satan. Satan has so many names. O dragon. Serpents, old serpent, man of sin, man of perdition. So this is one of the names of Satan, prince of the kingdom of Persia. Another name is prince of the air also. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which is Satan, withstood me one and 20, 20 days. He withstood him for 21 days. 21 days is three weeks. So Daniel prayed. God answered the prayer. God released the, the, the blessings for Daniel. The angel that was supposed to bring that blessing onto Daniel. God lives in third heaven. There's third heaven. Second heaven is where the moon and the, and the uh, sun. And that's where the headquarters of Satan and those demons. And we, the, third, uh, the fourth heaven is where the aeroplane. When we travel, we fly the aeroplane 30,000, 30 something thousand above the sea level and more or 35,000 and co. The first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. God lives on third, third, third heaven. So, it was released spiritually on the third heaven for Daniel. So, that angel that was bringing the blessings of Daniel to him when God answered his prayer, it was withstood on the, in the second heaven by Satan, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, withstood me one and twenty days. Twenty-one days, that's three weeks. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia until he called unto heaven. That angel that was supposed to bring the blessings. Because Satan and Co., they withheld him. He couldn't come down. So, uh, what's his name? Michael, who is the head of the warrior angel, the same one that chased Satan. There was war in heaven. And Satan was cast out of heaven. The one third angel that Satan corrupted, who were worship angels of God, they went to war with, 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 with Michael and his armies. And Michael and his armies def defeated them and cast them out. That's why Jesus said, I saw Satan fell from heaven like a lightning. So they held him. So that's why I said that any blessings that God has released from heaven for 2023, that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and for our children, he will locate us. That God will send, even if he's held in, in second heaven. 
Lord, we send an angel to, to help us to get. And that's why I pray that tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, any blessings that is for 2022 shall locate us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So now, if we go, you see, because this is part of time and season. Daniel was so fortunate. Immediately he prayed. The blessing was released. The angel was bringing. You remember when uh, Jacob, that place where he, he make an uh, uh, altar for God, when he was sleeping, he used a stone and he had that vision. That he saw a ladder went to heaven. And in the vision, God is on top. And he sees some angels carrying things up and carrying things down, carrying things up and carrying things down. That's just like the same thing. So the angel was bringing blessings unto, unto Daniel, but it was withheld by the prince of the kingdom of Pasha, Satan and Co. So I pray tonight that Almighty God, that if there are any blessings from the Lord God Almighty for this 23, for this 2022 that has not come in these few 15, 14 more days that is left, it shall locate us in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, if we go to the book of uh let me see New Testament. Let's go quickly to uh, Acts, the book of Acts. The book of Acts. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forevermore and blessed be our Lord Jesus Christ for ever and evermore. Amen. The book of Acts chapter seven, 17, 29 to 31. Let me read quickly. 17 to 9 to 31. Okay. The Bible says, For as much as for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by an by art and by men's device. That's why I told you. We will not worship idol, we will not worship any other God, but the only living God. Our creator, our father, the God has, that gave us salvation. God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that one God. That's the only God we shall worship all the days of our life. And I say also, no spirit shall rule over our spirit, but the spirit of the living God, the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of God Almighty. That's the spirit that shall rule over our spirit. No any other spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. And the times of the of this ignorance, God winked at. But now God, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained. Whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had raised him from the dead. You see, time, time and season. You see what I'm saying?